Development of idiopathic thoracic scoliosis, pathogenesis, starting from a normal age-appropriate sagittal profile. The scoliosis is caused by a genetic determination leading to a lordotic deformity of the sagittal profile and formation of a periapical lordosis. As the spine continues to grow, the lordosis increases, leading to hooking of the cranial and caudal facet joints, corresponding to the end vertebrae of the scoliosis. This causes the spine to bend forward. The anatomy of the facet joints restrict the options for further bending forward. As a result, the spine moves with a sideways rotation, starting from the apex. The sideways rotation is responsible for the outcome and is increasing the scoliosis. This forward movement of the spine combined with the sideways rotation movement is referred to as buckling or crankshaft phenomenon. The condition is visualized here in the sagittal and coronal plane. Axial view. The vertebral body's rotational movement together with the medial rib portion attached to the vertebral body turns toward the convexity of the curve. The spinous process rotates toward the concavity of the curve. Special aspects of the costovertebral connection. The ribs are connected to the vertebral body by means of two joints, the costotransverse articulation and the costovertebral articulation. The condition is treated as follows. Reversing the pathogenesis restores the normal curve of the spine. The following steps are carried out. Resection of the costovertebral articulation together with rib head resection creates movable space for reversing the deformity at a later stage. To correct the lordosis, the first step involves removing the vertebral disc. Then, the PLL, posterior longitudinal ligament, is transected. This eliminates the lordosis and returns the spine to normal kyphosis. The reverse of the pathogenetic processes is carried out by implantation of a rod and screw system. This is the correction of the abnormal curvature in the three planes of the spine.